come to this thing. This is going to be a little description of uh, the game. So it's going to be a VR based game. This is, um, it's going to be, you teleport around to different environments. So the, the sort of premise of the, the, the experience is you are a identical Siamese twin. You exist in a world of identical Siamese twins. Uh, the twins operate in pain cycles. These pain cycles go on for a few months in the, uh, where one twin tor tortures the other identical twin and then they re reverse roles at the end of that cycle. You're approached by this mysterious um, investigator dude at the beginning right here. Uh, he comes into your apartment unannounced and he says we're trying to track down this guy, he's, uh, he's, he's broken his pain cycle, he's, uh, his twin's dead, we, we want to find him, he's dangerous. He's released a bunch of poems in like subversive underground um, like magazines and zines and like literature like that. Uh, we want you to look through and see if there's any sort of hidden meanings and anything you can sort of decode from his... Um, uh, from his writings of where he might be or what his motivations are. So this conversation plays out here. Um, it plays out here and in a few sort of variations of this place. So it's um, it sort of starts building up this slightly, so this is one that's slightly screwed up. It starts building up this slightly sort of surreal um, feeling. Uh, you sort of jump around and switch perspectives quite a bit. It's, it's like... Um, Here's one where it's all made out of TVs. So the opening sequence is this conversation between you and... Uh, well, between the quote-unquote protagonist and the investigator. But it's kind of quite uh, jumpy and it's, um, it's quite sort of not self-referential, but sort of things are... Uh, quite open to interpretation, quite uh, ethereal almost, and sort of referring to the uh, the bigger sort of plot that's taking place. The So you're asked to, um, to track down this identical twin, um, fr um, this twin via, um, via the, you know, his writings. Um, there's also some areas that you... So this this scene isn't going to really take too long, but there's lots of like jump cuts to different places, and eventually um, you agree to start reading the. It's more like you put on these weird goggles, and that somehow lets you experience the the writing as like a immersive VR experience for some reason. Uh, so this is the first one. This is a sort of like. Uh, amusement park 9-11 um, handshake uh, boat ride you take um, I th this is oh, the boats underwater a little bit let me see if I can fix that so this bits gonna be upside down and the sort of core of this bit is traveling in this boat so it's gonna be a scripted like uh, travel sequence going towards these two towers uh, this is also gonna be upside down flipped and um, it's a sort of like a slow realization that the, the person, you know, you're being taken to, by this person in a boat to this place. And it's the sort of realization that you, you don't belong here. The kid's uh, changed his mind, doesn't want you there. And that whatever was there is, uh, is going to be left. That, this section here is a section that's very up in the air in terms of uh, like dialogue and narrative. And I believe we have... Uh, another section right here. This is the card game. This card game. Ooh, my mouse is a bit sensitive. My movement. This card game is uh, sort of is based around a game designer's Chris Crawford's uh, GDC talk called The Dragon. Uh, you fall in right here. You're like a little kid at the game. All these objects have like physics, so they all fall down. Uh, or there's like a big swell of uh, all the robots talking to each other. And the sort of antagonist of this, well, protagonist of this scene is this robot right here, I believe. Uh, so everyone's sort of messing around, everyone's talking, but it's clear that this this one robot has like a big speech. His monologue's just begun, and it's like he's uh, like the single normal guy in a room full of uh, like manipulative 
billionaire um, aristocratic robot business owners and he's like a small business owner that's been fucked over and this is like his big um, coming there and like winning the game of poker to sort of um, cripple them and show them that he's the big boss and it's also um, I'm going to work on this one quite a bit I think uh, it's going to be about um, like Chris Crawford's The Dragon like about chasing this this concept of the dragon and how um, uh, and how sort of difficult it is to um, to exist um, you know perpetually chasing this uh, this sort of concept and how how the rest of the world is very apathetic to this struggle and uh, you know it's like his uh, his business whatever it may be isn't quite isn't quite working out for him no matter what, like what he does or how honest and how good he is and everyone around this table is just a lazy cheat and they're all succeeding without him and then at the end I'm not 100% too sure if I'm going to use it but he comes back with a, a Tommy gun, uh, perhaps a final like shouting moment, and eventually it all fills up with water and floods everything. And that water will uh, like affect the scene a lot more when it has physics enabled. So again, as you, that seems like quite short. That seems like almost a you know a little over a minute I would say um, this one's much much shorter this one is the like one of three uh, this one is you're sort of sitting here feeding ducks and there's two audio layers one is kind of like uh, the Hamlet so it's kind of like um, so it's just some sort of Polonius dialogue uh, and you're feeding the ducks, which are VHS tapes, um, and it's sort of also kind of your parents uh, sort of having an argument upstairs while you watch a, while you watch you know Sunday morning cartoons or you know watch TV downstairs. And this is like very short. It's got you know it sort of transitions in and sort of warps out very quickly. Uh, and the, this sort of Hamlet section uh, repeats twice, and then the final one, um, and the final section of these, uh, you get told that Ophelia has just been has drowned. She's jumped in the river, uh, and it's just about to begin the like final uh, tragedy bit. But then it turns out that the ducks, in the end, have um, have decided, you know, to come out in your favour. And she gets rescued by all the ducks, and she got dragged out of the river. And the ducks, the ducks bring, bring her in, so it avoids avoids the sort of tr the tragedy in the end with the loving ducks. That is that scene. I've gone in the wrong direction. Go over here. This scene here is um oh this scene here is um protagonist. The player starts off right here. They can't really see what's going on. They're on a. They've got a guy down here, uh, and they've got a bear over here, and they're on a spaceship with like, it's like kind of like an old folks home type thing. Like it's a carrier ship, but uh, they're all dead except in this last one. And when this last one's gone, both AI caretakers, you and the robot, are going to be shut off. So you, the old sort of dying guy is still alive, the machine's like showing his heart rate and he asks to be like told his memory and the like the purpose of these robots, like you being one and the teddy bear being the other, is to tell these people, retell these people their memories uh, that they like can't remember anymore that are like stuck in the arc, uh, you know, the sort of digital archives. So the bear tells this a uh, story about how you know when he was a child he went to you know his, uh, his uncle's f um, like forest cabin but on the way there like one of his uh, one of the people in the town's like house caught fire and their barn caught fire and the barn burnt down and it had like a brand new tractor in it, and it was like bankrupted the family but um, and it was like so peculiar turning up to the you know in being this weird place in the mountains with your uncle uh, that you barely know and this like massive tragedy happens but uh, during that um, that night you and uh, you and your uncles you and your um, what would it be you and your cousin uh, cousins like slip out and they you go back to the the place of the barn but 
burnt down and now it's just a few cinders it's a cold night and there's a few like deers uh, like a little baby deer resting on it like getting the warmth from the embers and how there's some sort of massive poignancy to that and the idea that you know that you know huge colossal human tragedy eventually boils down into perhaps saving a deer's life and some sort of cosmic relevance to that to our own uh, perpetual struggles and uh, then the guy dies uh, after that you sort of r you rip out his heart you rip out his kidney thing there you rip out his belly and you throw it in this hole down here all the lights come on you s well, some of the lights come on like highlighting all the corpses around it and the bear says like you know I don't want to turn into ashes I don't want to you know be turned off I don't want to um, it's not enough for me to to you know save a deer I wanted you know I want something more uh, and then that scene is over what's this here it's just it's like just black it was just there was just nothing in there so it's this that's, that's just a little scene this one here is where are you This one here is called Christmas on Mars, uh, and it should be Christmas on Mars right here. It's set on Mars, and it's... where the fuck am I? Here we go. It's set on Mars, and you... you're... where are you? So you start off... Hmm. Here, let me just redo that real quick. You start off here-ish, uh, and you're um, you're in an underground sort of Martian uh, like underground system with a bunch of Marines. They're they're being bombarded like far off the outside. They're deep underground. The roof sort of shaking. There's dust falling down. It's kind of like um, a you know bunker during a great storm. Um, and this one guy over here starts recounting um, his how it's it's Christmas Day right now, and he starts recounting how Christmas Day was this thing they used to do on Earth. Everyone here is not from Earth; they're all from other colonies and other places. And he he tells a story. He's like the old senior guy. He tells this story about how uh, you know back on Earth he was recruited, and back on Earth he. It was trained and th uh, thought about all this, and you know the, uh, the how you know Christmases were, uh, you know back then, and uh, with his you know mother and his family, uh, and they were all you know uh, very very different from uh, you know anything resembling now, and how his first Christmas outside of there should be. Let me. The time is a bit strange, like these are his pods leaving it, so it's mainly like an autobiographical, um, kind of like the sort of Blade Runner um, like story of his life type thing, you know, I've seen things you, you people can imagine, but it's focused around, uh, you know, this one perfect moment of Christmas and how it's a sort of unifying um, best, best example of... Um, human expression and uh, sort of peace and love and tranquility and uh, you know uh, giving um, you know giving presents and doing all that lovely stuff is um, it shouldn't just be a a dream it should be uh, you know say it isn't so say it's say it's real um, it's like sort of saying the, the you know the tragedy of um, Christmas is that it's like um, it's like a shared delusion for one day a year that human humanity reveals its true potential to being a loving a loving caring civilization of um, like responsible people who who want to see each other happy and there we go a beautiful Christmas tree symbolizing uh, symbolizing the spirit of Crimbo. Christmas itself, and this scene's about to end. Uh, this one, 
is actually somewhat more done, but I'm not sure if it, how visible it's going to be. It's called planes. So this one is you, you start off and you're in this sort of completely black space and there's a bunch of aeroplanes you can pick up and throw around so you throw them like paper planes and they fly around and then you throw a particular paper plane and oh, where am I? and your camera is not going to be green your camera sort of sticks to it and you're now following around this paper plane in this big black void so you throw it and then you go whoof, and you sort of catch up to it and it's flying around all these trees uh, in a park and this is um, this is going to be a, like a musical segment only it's pretty short uh, and it's in VR so it's kind of like dizzying and it's like proper not best design practices and all that stuff it's great uh, and you sort of spin around and enjoy um, all these sort of vistas very quickly like um, naked girls under sheets uh, let's get to the end that's the end Ooh, that's not the end I messed up a bit at the end you meet you go up to these two faces here uh, and it's a sort of um, you know, a chance encounter love story that sort of plays out very quickly and plays out just, um, just sort of musically. I'm thinking sort of very minimal, um, you know, piano or, or something that's just, um, it is uh, supposed to be haunting. Uh, I don't, which one is this? Definitely have missed one out. So, this is uh, a scene where, where where's the, hmm. I've just got so many, that's not it. Just trying to find the correct no okay so this is a, a scene where you're ah, look that, that bloody looks like it to me yeah so this is a scene where you're you're inside this uh cage it's completely black outside uh you're you're right here uh, like a feminine voice outside you know says you know it's going to be okay it's you know you just got to believe in me you, you know we we can do this if we're together uh but i'm sorry i can't ever get you out of here you're stuck there's no way you know we we can try but you know i'm gonna you know die looking at you inside the cage but there's there's something we can do you can you can reach in and pull out your heart and give it to me and i can take it away and we'll be together in a in that way and um you know we'll we'll survive this if you do that so you pull out your heart and this is in vr so you literally will he'll look down and the heart will have appeared and you can rip it out and give it to the hand that's appeared but now the second you give it to the hand it um it jerks back it's revealed that it's on this massive rod the rod's on this huge conveyor belt thing uh you know the sort of voice is going mad, it's creaking, or, and in the actual thing, all these people aren't stuck in T-poses, they're like lying on the floor, with the sort of physics places them, there's this fucking nasty looking female head with robot teeth, the actual poor little heart on the conveyor belt, uh, so it goes from like prophetic, um, cutesy um, love story, and the to like um, you being completely and utterly betrayed and um, and also like this has happened to everyone else around you like every other cage someone else has had their heart ripped out and tricked in the exact same way as you what's next oh and then the, it ends off with well the last like thing is the Hamlet one the final Ophelia being saved by the ducks, then it goes to the um, 
the uh, like final conversation between you and the detective, like uh, the the sort of bookend, the beginning. You begin off um, being asked to do the stuff by the detective, and the detective finally, you know, comes back around and says, you know, wh where do you think he is? What have you learned? The the sort of overarching story is that you are the other twin. You, you know, he's your twin, uh, and both of you kind of know that from the beginning uh, and it's not really very well hidden if you know what I'm saying so the you're both he's saying he's hunting down an identical uh, twin that's on the run that's you he's your twin you both kind of know it slightly there's not too much um, like in the way of uh, like narrative pretense at that almost it's really about um, it's really more about um, sort of betrayal and sort of discussing, um, you know, discussing the video game in a sort of meta-contextual way. I'm still uh, sort of working on the, the finer points of what needs to be said there. This is a scene I've got to talk about. This is going to be another... It's going to have some mainly SFX to begin with and then sort of move into music and more spatial stuff. But it sort of starts off all these people are waving at you and you have a selection of hands to pick from to pick up and wave back. Uh, again, it's a VR game, so you'll be literally waving, uh, wearing goggles, looking at these people. And it goes around all the crowd. They're all waving. And eventually, uh, they it the sort of light goes from the massive crowd where you're interacting with them that, with a hand and it moves I don't know why there's that weird thing of light there on the floor but you down there it, it's like childbirth noises so it's this concept of you greeting the crowd and interacting with them and being public and using your waving hands as the sort of accepted way of doing that but then it moves into this um, this um, I guess parable or whatever this mini narrative of um, you know this prince's wife who dies in childbirth and being left with a son and being like um, you know peculiar and alienated and not quite understanding what you're supposed to do or know the precedents but being uh, isolated by the um, by the lack of interaction the only thing you have to do is you can just wave with your hand you're you're not really sort of trained or made to to deal with tragedy or deal with, um, uh, you know, ha living or deal with uh, any of this sort of stuff. So it's so it's the sort of childbirth noises, light penetrates through here, lots of other noises, crying babies, um, crashes, burning, smashes. Light appears here. You see the, you see the man and is clutching his child. Over here is the cloth, um, the crib in cloth, and then eventually the light pans up here. A single word, a tiny m monologue et is said, and then it cuts on the scene. So the overall um, uh, sort of objective of the story is uh, of the the game is uh, sort of kind of discovering that the um, that the meta narrative of you being asked to investigate this these murders you know investigate these stories is kind of pointless is kind of made up by is you know sort of meta and contextual meta you know recontextualized it's just a video game made up by me uh, and the real truth lies within the the parables and the stories that are all pulled from real things and that the sort of falsity wrapper of the the game is um, just a construct of um, to to make to allow the rest to exist and perhaps to trick you into playing it it does um, play out with a bit of a finale, the ending, perhaps some shooting, but um, 